In this video, we'll talk about wholesale patch clamp recording technique. Wholesale patch clamp is one type of configuration used in the patch clamp technique. Overall, this technique is used to determine the electrophysiological properties of neuron. In this video, we'll talk about what is wholesale configuration, the working principle, application, and how to interpret the data. Let's get a quick overview of patch clamp technique. Patch clamp method allows the investigation of small set of or even single ion channel properties. Patch clamp experiments can be done either on dissociated culture or neuronal cultures. If we look at the applications of patch clamp, we'll see that investigations of ion channels can be done using this technique. Especially, it is important for excitable cells like neurons or other cells like cardiomyocytes. Important method in uh, medical research is patch clamp because this particular technique can be used to detect ion channel properties and many diseases are associated with ion channel. From a pharmacological point of view, this is also interest for, interesting for screening drugs which act on ion channel. And patch clamp recordings can also be combined with live cell imaging, which is really useful for the neuroscientists. So many properties of neuron can be determined using this whole cell patch clamp recording, such as the capacitance, conductance, firing frequency, input resistance, firing pattern, etc. So bunch of electrophysiological parameters can be determined. So let's look at the patch clamp recording setup to understand this process better. So this is how the electrophysiology rig would look like. Here you can see the microscope with micro manipulators attached. We'll look at it in a bit more details later on. Then it entire setup is kept in a Faraday cage and the microscope is mounted on a vibration free table because getting the neuron patched is really difficult job and no vibration should be there while recording this stuff. Then there is amplifiers, oscillators, etc. And everything is connected with a software in a computer. And there is also a sample preparation table where one can bevel electrodes, one can prepare their tissue sample, etc. So this is how our overall patch setup look like. Now, if we look at the micro manipulator, we can see a electrode it is attached with the micro manipulator. So this allows maneuvering of the electrode around the neuron. And with the objective, we can image the particular neuron that from where we want to patch. So it would allow us to do the visualization part. So in this setup, we can see the customized stage looks like this. And the samples are prepared in a ACSF or artificial cerebrospinal fluid such that they are alive or otherwise they won't show any kind of electrophysiological properties. Then this is the micro manipulator with which the electrodes are attached. And here you can see the microscope objective. Now let's see how we can use patch clamp wholesale recording configuration to determine several electrophysiological properties. First of all, it can be used to determine action potentials like shown here. So here is the electrode and here is the small patch of neuronal membrane as seen in this diagram. So patching a neuron is difficult. First of all, a suction is applied to aid this particular membrane seal. And this membrane seal is so tight that the resistance reach giga ohm range. That's a lot. And this tight seal isolates the membrane electrically. Whatever ion flows through these ion channels in this patch of membrane now can be detected by the amplifiers attached with these electrodes. So moral of the story, the seal has to be very tight such that nothing can leak out. So let's talk about some technical details of wholesale patch clamp technique. So here, this is the patched membrane. This is the electrode. This is the pipette solution. First of all, the glass pipette isolates the portion of the membrane when you patch on the neuron. And it is connected to an amplifier like this. And this amplifiers amplify the miniature currents or voltage changes. Otherwise, it's impossible to detect. So the amplifiers are really important setup in wholesale configuration or any kind of patch clamp configuration. Now let's talk about the subtypes of patch clamp. 
There are several subtypes of patch clamp. We call it configurations, such as cell attached configuration, whole cell configuration, inside out and outside out configuration. This video is dedicated about the whole cell configuration. So whole cell is one type and one configuration of a patch clamp recording method. So question is how whole cell configuration is achieved. So this is a portion of the neuronal membrane and here is the searching electrode. This phase is known as the search. A positive pressure is applied through this electrode such that the tip of the electrode remains very clean. Here if we inject a voltage we would see a current like this. Now whenever we patch onto a neuron like this and establish a giga ohm seal then the resistance would increase so high that we would see almost no current like this. This indicates that we have established a giga ohm seal. Once we have established a giga ohm seal then suction is applied to break open this connection. And then a rapid current flows like this you can see in red. That means the whole cell configuration is established. Now patch clamp whole cell configuration has two operation regimes. One is voltage clamp mode and another is current clamp mode. So in the voltage clamp mode the voltage remains constant and we measure current. So here we inject some kind of stimulus and we see the response and you can see the response in pico amps. That means it is current that we are measuring. So voltage clamp measures current. And in current clamp method, we clamp the particular uh, current and measure the voltage change. So here we can see the voltage has changed. Looking at the axis, it is completely understandable. Here you can see the axis labels as millivolt and millisecond. So change in voltage is determined. So if you want to record action potentials, current clamp method is the correct option. Now here we can see uh, automated uh, simulation of a uh, whole cell configuration current clamp recording. With the increase of current step we can see how the voltage is changing and giving rise to an action potential. And in the side by side we can see this in a voltage versus current graph. So you see when the current is becoming more uh, and more there is an increase in voltage and suddenly there is a action potential. Now let's try to contextualize this from a known example. Let us look at the glutamatergic synapse. In the glutamatergic synapse, we would find glutamate receptors such as AMPA receptors, which binds to glutamate and allows cations to uh, get in. And there is NMD receptors, which is also bound to, uh, which is, which is also bound to glutamate, but doesn't allow ions to get in until and unless the inside is really, really positive. So after conduction via AMPA receptors, the inside becomes positive and the NMD receptors becomes conductive because the magnesium ion is now repelled by these excess positive charge inside. So in order to understand the current properties of AMPA and NMD receptor, we can perform this whole cell recording method. So let us look at the electrophysiological properties of AMPA receptor. So in this case, we can do a voltage clamp recording. That means we are clamping voltage, recording current. We can hold the cell in minus 70 millivolts, minus 50 millivolts and record the current like this. In order to interpret this data in a better fashion, we plot a IV curve. IV curve means voltage versus, uh, voltage versus current plot. Here you can see from this IV plot that inward current flows in negative voltage, whereas outward current flows in positive voltage and zero is the reversal potential. Similarly, we can look at the properties of NMD receptor using similar methods. We can inject negative current, we can hold the voltage at a negative potential like minus 70, minus 50, and we can measure the current like this. Also, we can plot this in an IV plot, as you can see here. In the IV plot, we can see almost no current at the negative voltage, whereas little amount of inward current in the uh, voltage which is minus 50 or beyond or close to zero that means slightly more positive and we can see outward current in a positive voltage. So this is how we can understand the properties of NMDA and AMPA mediated currents. We can compare these currents using these IV plot. So for electrophysiologist this IV plot is super duper useful. 
So let me tell you how this is useful. Let's say one electrophysiologist exclusively want to record AMPA current and want to get rid of the NMDA current. Knowing these IV plot would allow them to do so. Let me tell you how. So let us consider two voltages. So at plus 60 millivolt voltage, if we record, we would see both AMPA and NMDA current. AMPA current is in blue and NMDA current is in red. But if we do hold the cell in minus 60 millivolt, then we see there is an AMPA current, but no NMDA current. And this can be nicely visualized from the IV plot. Due to the magnesium block, no current flows in the negative voltage. So if we hold the cell in a negative voltage, we can isolate the AMPA currents from a pool of AMPA and NMDA mediated currents. So these kind of nitty gritty details are used by the electrophysiologist to get a better sense about the electrophysiological properties of the neuron. So in summary, what we looked at is initially there is a um, attachment to the cell in a whole cell configuration, very similar to the cell attached uh, recording. And then there is a breakage of the membrane, which allows the interior of the cell to become continuous with the solution in the pipette. And it is very useful to determine the overall properties of the neuron. So I hope this was useful. You can get many flashcards and notes associate with these videos and other videos in my Facebook page. You can follow my Instagram page for daily updates. All the links are in description. In order to support my channel, you can click on the super thanks option, which is present in the bottom right corner of any video. You can contribute using Paytm, PayPal or UPI. You can support my channel by subscribing to it. You can also subscribe the Nerd Medic channel for exclusive medical content. See you in next video.